speaker is a representative from Pioneer Hybrid. His name is uh, Dr. Robert Bowling. The title of his address is Innovations and Drought Tolerance. A bit of a background. Uh, Robert is a native Texan, born and raised in Amarillo. He has a Bachelor of Science in Plant Science from West Texas A&M. And all the way through a PhD from Kansas State. He's worked uh, for Texas Ag Life Extension Services as an IPM agent and is currently the uh, area agronomist for Pioneer Hybrid has been in that position for the last five years. He's certainly an expert. I've been on programs with him and the content that he's going to give us is going to be worth your attention. So I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Bull. Well, thank you, Nick, and it's certainly a pleasure being here today and have a chance to talk a little bit about innovations and drought tolerance, the types of work that Pioneer's doing. It's always interesting when we come to these presentations, these types of presentations, you have industry folks out talking about any kind of uh, technology. There's going to be a lot of overlap, so a lot of the stuff you heard TK talk about this morning is going to be some of the same stuff that we're talking about in Pioneer. Now, uh, if you come and talk, listen to anyone talk about drought tolerance, you're going to see a slide like this. TK showed one that's very similar. Essentially, what we're showing is the potential for yield loss of corn in these uh, corn production areas across the United States. And it's no secret that we're in the center of what would probably be considered uh, one of the highest areas, or as far as losses, corn yield losses for drought tolerance, or drought. Uh, we're kind of in that area where we can experience some very heavy yield losses just associated with drought. And when I think about that, as you travel the countryside, you move up to the Midwest, they're absolutely amazed that we can go corn at all when we talk about our annual rainfalls. But it's like TK said, the reason we're successful is because we have the ability to irrigate. We've got this big aquifer underneath us that allows farmers to grow high production corn. The biggest issue there is we all know that that aquifer is declining. We're using that thing up at a very, very alarming rate. The other thing about that is we have water regulations that have been around for 10 years, but they haven't been enforced very heavily. We're looking at a point now where those uh, regulations are going to be enforced, and the amount of water we're actually going to have available to produce corn is going to be shrinking uh, from here on out. We know that. So we've got to, as companies, as Monsanto, Syngenta, or Pioneer, it doesn't matter. We've got to get better uh, producing hybrids that will make it a farmer profitable on less water. Now TK talked a little bit about uh, the challenges when we talk about drought tolerance. And our breeders, when you, when you say, okay, you need to start producing hybrids that are tolerant, drought tolerant, they kind of pucker for a number of reasons. Uh, TK talked about simply inheritance traits. If you talk about insect resistance, disease resistance, those are usually one or two traits that are responsible for that type of resistance. And they aren't affected by environment. It doesn't matter what that environment's doing, that trait's going to be expressed at that same level. That's what it does. But if you start talking about drought tolerance, there's a number of different genes that are involved. They're very complex, and they're very, um, they're, they're uh, affected by the environment. So if we have changes in environment, that's going to affect the way those genes perform in that plant. So the breeders really have a tall task as far as trying to determine what those drought tolerant genes are and how they're being expressed in plants and how they're affecting drought tolerance itself. Within Pioneer, we're taking a three, it, it's actually more of a two prong approach. TK talked about their three prong approach. We're looking at it in two different ways. But within Pioneer, we've actually been working on drought tolerance since the inception of the company. So for eight years, we've been looking for hybrids that perform under drought conditions. And that's mainly because it doesn't matter where you're growing corn, if you're in the Midwest, in a drought situation, there's going to be times when that corn stress, drought stress, heat stress. We know that's going to happen here. It's like TK said, we're in a, we're in a hot basket. If you don't have water, you're trying to grow corn. Uh, it's going to go a lot of stress. So we've been working on this for years and years. We, we do have hybrids that uh, are very good 
drought tolerant products. And these are kind of our benchmark products. This is what these are our measuring sticks for what's to come. So we have products like 35F40, um, 36B75. I was talking to Justin this morning about that hybrid. 33B54, those hybrids all have excellent drought tolerance. So we do have products that um, today that are good, good uh, products for water rooted environments. Our next step is drought one, or what would be termed drought one. Drought one is going to be products that possess native traits for drought tolerance. And we're going to do this using some um, enhanced breathing techniques. One you see up here is AYT, and AYT simply stands for accelerated yield technology. And what we're doing with that technique is we're, we're selecting for traits using molecular markers. So breeders know where these genes are on, on chromosomes, and anymore they don't have to go through an evaluation period look at, or evaluation program where they're looking at the phenotype of these hybrids. They can actually pull leaf samples from those hybrids, take it to the lab, uh, do a genetic analysis, and start looking for those genes that are present you're going to find them with those markers. And so it's no longer a guess. We really start reducing the error, the, the probability of selecting the wrong hybrid based on phenotypes by taking those uh, leaf, leaf discs into the lab and looking for those genes of interest. So that's going to be the first, uh, the first thing that you're going to see out behind here. We're actually there. I think that we're going to talk a little bit more about our targeted drought tolerant program. But, uh, Within the next year or two, you're going to see drought tolerant products on the market. And these are going to be products that are more focused uh, in forming under severe, what we would consider severe uh, water limited environments. And you know, last year was the first year we had these targeted drought sets. And when they said, okay, you're going to have these sets, and this is the way we want these sets put out, they did say, uh, but what we were told, is if any of those things yield over 150 bushels, they're going to be mad at us. So what they want us to do is put in dry land situations, put in very extremely limited water situations to see how we've been moving forward under those uh, conditions. Looking down the road again, we're talking five to seven years out, uh, that's where we're going to introduce drought two, which is going to incorporate a transgene, drought tolerant gene, such as the one that uh, it's not going to be the same genes, but similar to what TK is talking about. We're going to take those genes and we're going to incorporate it, incorporate that gene, we pick out that one, and we're going to incorporate it to these drought uh, one products. And that's going to give us the most, uh, best of both worlds. We have uh, full coffee with native genes for drought colors along with the uh, trans gene. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about drought one because that's, that's where we are right now. We're real close to having these hybrids out there uh, for production purposes. And the major goal of uh, this drought one is mainly to make sure that the, our customers, our growers, are getting the most crop out of every drop of water that's available. We're going to do this in a three-prong approach. One, we're going to be doing we're ramping up research programs to look at drought tolerance, increase the number of breeding programs we have around the country that do nothing but evaluate and breed products for drought tolerance. Agronomics is mainly just the field people we have in place to understand how these hybrids perform, understand how these traits work, and uh, uh, increase the ability to place the place of the right product on the right acre. And then efficiency, just through the technologies, some things we have on hand to improve the uh, ability to bring these products forward and the ability of hybrids to use water very efficiently.